A very good morning. My name is Yong Lin. Today, I'm here to present on the equipment design for a maternal distillation column C301. Before that, let's have a look on the design methodology for distillation column. There are generally eight steps, starting from our product specifications, operating conditions, connecting device, stage and reflux requirement, column sizing, column internal design, mechanical design, and lastly, the technical drawing. As known that the main objective of the distillation column C301 is to purify the methanol products from 88.5% up to the market solution of 99%. For multi-component distillation, the column design can be done by determining the two key components in the feed stream. In this case, methanol is a light key and water is a heavy key. By assuming ideal condition, the relative polarity of the component can be determined using equi this equation based on the equivalent data extracted from the ICON simulation. In terms of column type, the tray column is selected as to give better assurance in terms of liquid dispersion. Meanwhile, the sieve plate is selected due to its low cost, low pressure drop, and optimal operating range. Based on the operating conditions, using the Fansky equation and Underwood's equation, the minimum number of stages is determined to be 12 stages with, reflux, with minimum reflux ratio of 0.674. So based on overall methods, coloration, since the changes in the number of stages is minimal when the reflux ratio is more than 2, therefore the actual number of stages is determined with 15 stages with reflux ratio of 2, given color efficiency of 80%. Also, it's found to be the best to fit at a 7 tray from the top of the column. Next, the column sizing. By taking the plate spacing to be 0.55 meter, the column height is determined to be 9.488 meter. For the column diameter estimation, by taking 85% of flooding velocity, the column diameter is estimated to be 1.303 meter, giving height to diameter ratio of 7.28. Besides, the plate hydraulic design is important to ensure good vapor liquid dispersion with adequate liquid holdout for efficient mass transfer. Since the liquid vapor ratio in the column is low, it gives the reverse flow pattern in the column. In terms of plate areas, the plate dimension is calculated as shown in the table here, where the whole area is estimated based on 10% of active area. For the wear dimension, the wear height is taken to be 45 mm with an optimum wear length of 0.977 m. Next, whipping point. By taking the whole diameter to be 6 mm, since the calculated minimum vapor velocity is less than the actual minimum vapor velocity, therefore, whipping will not occur. For the peripheral area, by taking the calming zone between 50 mm at both sides of the plates, the total area for the perforation is estimated to be 0.821 m squared. In this design, the equilateral triangular pattern is selected for the whole arrangement with 3,573 holes per plate. Also, based on the calculation, the pressure drop in the column is minimal, which is about 2 kPa only. In terms of corrosion material, the standard steel 304 is selected due to high corrosion resistance, ability to withstand temperature up to at least 130 degrees Celsius, ability to withstand pressure up to at least 2 atm with design stress of 115 MPa. For good resistance to internal pressure, the shell wall thickness is taken to be 6 mm. With the cylindrical body, the transfigure heads are used to cover both ends due to the ability to withstand design pressure and temperature at economical cost. In terms of vessels subjected to combined loading, the dead weight of the column is approximated to be 46.8 kN. From there, the analysis of stress is then performed where the greatest difference between the primary stress is found to be on the downwind side, which is still lower than the maximum allowable stress. In terms of vessel support, a straight cylindrical skirt with carbon steel material and return to 2 mm thickness is used. For nozzle and piping sizing, by taking the fluid velocity in the pipe to be 4.5 m per second, the nozzle and piping sizing are then determined at all inlet and outlet. So here it shows the certification sheets which include the operating data, color specifications, trace specifications, nozzle specifications, mechanical data, support specifications, and external specifications. And here it shows the technical drawing which illustrates the cross-sectional view of the column, external view of the column, sieve tray layout, and lastly, the whole layout. And now, I will end my presentation here. Thank you.